this is a family room and it is a converted garage. Maybe you've done the same thing. You've tried to gain livable space and you can see what's happening. Water floods right, right into that family room every time it rains. She paid a contractor to come out and put a catch basin in, but look at this discharge. That is a one inch pipe and I have no idea where it goes, but it doesn't work. When I came out here for the estimate, the woman told me that every time it rains, this floods and it just floods right into the family room. And you can see it's pretty dramatic hill and that water would definitely come through if it didn't have a place to go. When I explored that catch basin, like I said, I found that little tiny pipe that I think probably ties into their footer system. But she said the very first rainfall, it flooded and the guy wouldn't come back. A typical problem that we kind of find every day. I hope you guys don't find this type of problem with your contractors. She already had a pump and she asked, can we use my pump to save some money? And she didn't mind if we pumped it up and over the wall, but she really wanted a more permanent solution rather than putting that pump down in the catch basin every time it rained. We'll start by trenching the discharge line. We've got about 240 feet to trench. And it's rather deep, so we need to get that trench done for our PVC, which will go all the way to the back of this property. Next, we'll go ahead and start into the concrete. Hey, good morning. Chuck here at the Apple Drains. Today we're putting in a sump pump that's going to be a collection device for this area here and you can see this driveway came down to this walkout basement and they had a catch basin installed when it was originally built so what we're doing is we're going to cut a channel drain over here to the where i've already cut a square for the sump pit break all this out dig it up put the pit in there they are using their pump it's a half horsepower pump with a battery backup and we're also going to put a piece of channel drain across here the line will come up discharge and you can see that we've already trenched the line. I'm using a Hilti 700 gas powered partner saw and it's really important when you run these saws that you cut all the way through the concrete. Hopefully it's only three or four inches thick. Sometimes it's much thicker as you'll see later on but make good clean cuts and run some water to help cool off your blade and you'll be in good shape. So you can see how it works. Basically we've made a lot of cuts. Now we use our pry bar and just keep beating in one spot until we can get a crack and you can see the cracks already formed. Now we go ahead and pry one piece out so you can get to all the other pieces. Over here by the sump pit you can see I made a separate cut because that's such a large piece of concrete it's easier to you know, have a separate cut to try to lift it out. Okay, so we finished cutting out the concrete and you can see where we left a little bit in there. There's actually just going to be a pipe that runs through here, but they over poured this by about six or eight inches. So this is about 10 inches thick. And of course your blade only cuts four inches. So we had to kind of modify that. Lots of little cuts and lots of pounding, but we've got that all out. We're going to have a leave this as the catch basin. There is a grate that goes over top of that. And then we'll run the discharge line over there where Derek's digging for the sump pit. And then we'll lift it up over the wall, tie it into the discharge line, and we're done. Well, you know, got to put the concrete back, things like that. Yeah, there we go. So, last bit of concrete here, and you can see we've already got the pit installed. And this water is going to flow over towards that area, but that's okay. And then we're going to clean this last piece out. We'll run some pipe in here, clean up the area, and go ahead and install the pump. And then we're ready to concrete this back. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and cut off the nipple. Here, well, if you've seen me do this many times, we just get a good hacksaw and you slice off this nipple. And this is the collection. And this is the inlet line coming in from the catch basin. 
So we'll set the pit down in here and you can kind of see how it's going to look. Water comes from the catch basin and it will come right into the pit. Okay, so we've got everything plumbed. We're going to take this apart so you can see we've got our sump pit and the lid installed. We've got the inlet line, which is going to go over to that giant hole right there. That's actually an existing catch basin. And there's a big grate that goes on. It's over there behind the uh, post hole diggers. Once we're all done, we'll you know clean all this up and then we'll pour backfill into this area here and we'll go ahead and finish the concrete around our pit. But let's take a look inside because this is interesting. So, the reason I want you to see what's going on here is that they have bought their own pump and this is called a basement watchdog and it has a battery operated backup pump over here on the side, right over here. Um, the way this system works is there's actually two pumps. This is a little pump, and this bigger one is a half horsepower pump. When, if this power goes out here, the battery backup will kick on. There's a separate float switch on this smaller pump that comes up and works the same way. It's just a backup. Um, again, I'm not a big fan of backups. I think that they're really a waste of money. However, if you want to be safe, of course, you can always install it in there. But in today's world, most of the time, that pump, that power, kicks back on after it goes off, you know, within 20 minutes or so. So, it's really up to you and your preference. Okay, let's go ahead and put the lid back on here. And we'll go ahead and put it all back together, clean it up. Again, we're just pumping up and over the wall. And then we're going to tie into an existing trench right here. This goes back all the way back there where Derek's at to the end of the property. Okay, so it's time to clean up so we can pour that concrete. And this is a, the fun part. Really scrape that clean with your flat shovel and then come back with your hose and wash it just as clean as it was the moment they poured that concrete. And you'll get a good finish. You can see we've got our SDR 35. Notice how it juts into the catch basin about two or three inches. That's so those water fills up it's going to run into that SDR 35 over to the basin and it'll be done. So we've started to put our concrete back. We've got a nice little form down there if you can see. I just use cardboard as my form. I think it works really good. It's biodegradable and so they don't have to do anything. A little bit of excess cardboard there, but either way, this, this grate just lifts right off of there. You can pull that off of there once it dries. So we're going ahead and backfilling um, with the concrete, do our finish, secure the pump. And then finally, we'll go ahead and plumb this, you know, all the way over to the discharge line and then out to the back. You know, working with uh, Quickcrete is actually really pretty good, especially if you get a good mix. And Derek's mixing and he does a real good job of making a good mix here. So shouldn't take but just a minute to finish this out. We'll put it all the way around and then use our, our finishing trowel right here <laughs> to uh, finish it off and it should look really good. It does dry extremely white. Okay, so here's our completed install. You can see we've got a new four inch, uh, four inch solid. This is SDR 35 PVC. Runs from this grate across to the sump pit. Sump pump lifts it up, sends it out follows that trench all the way out to the back and that should help keep this area dry. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.